for a long time. You don't get tired of it. It's a big genre. It's an ocean. We are just into the genre of crazy music, so that could be anything from any time. Tramp's you know. style has that ground of rockabilly. And I wondered why over the years you've kept that as a sort of the staple to start from. Because it's the coolest. It's just the best thing there it's is. It's the center of the universe, the heart of rock and roll, you know? In the, the new bio, because you have so many now, um, you mentioned that you said it was like the dangerous music of the 50s. When people think of the 50s, they don't think of danger in the music as much as they have over the years, I don't think. But you think back, it was a dangerous It was time. really dangerous. I, I've talked to people that remember the first time they heard Little Richard, and they said it just scared them when they heard it. You know, the older people that, that were young at the time, they said it was just terrifying to them, the sound of that. Um, and these know. people, yeah, had tough lives, a lot of the better yeah. entertainers of that era. They also mixed a lot of... Um, sexual innuendos in the songs. They sure did. The same as you do yeah. today. You don't actually come out and say something It's always sort of hinted at, which is yeah. kind of a... Well, yeah, like Tutti Frutti, uh, you know, Little Richard is also known as Miss Laverne, you know, and did drag shows and the same thing. And Tutti Frutti, the hit version, is just a cleaned up version of some party song he did in bars. Yeah. I'm I think not sure it's, what it's, it's about. It's much better to leave a little to the imagination. It's more surrealistic that way, you know. Leave something for people to visualize. Yeah, turn your brains out. <laughs> We're in the middle of it, yeah. What little le we have left, we're going to tour them out. <laughs> okay. And what could we expect uh, in the cramp show? Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be wild. It's going to be the best. Lots of unexpectedness. Yeah? Like uh, surprises or? Oh, we never know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the sea of your audience that, that has come there, do you think they're always coming to you for the same reasons that you're making the music, or are they sometimes getting something different? They're getting something different, some of them. Yeah. I think our fans get, uh, come to see us for a wide variety of reasons, because some of them, they come and they think that we're a parody band, which I never could figure out, and so they're happy because they're entertained because they think it's funny and stuff. Other people think it's very serious, and they're happy for that reason. You know, so. We think we're a classic blues band. We think we are. Yeah. People laugh when we say that, but we're sincere. You've been getting together almost 20 years now as a band? Is that sort of close to say? Mm, not, not to quite. date everybody here, because I don't remember when you Maybe got together. Like sweet 16 or yeah. something. Like what, is it, what is it that's kept you together for so long as a band? But a lot of bands have a hard time getting through five years, let alone... I think it's because, the, because we formed this band because we love this kind of music. And uh, when you start out that way, as opposed to starting out with no love of music because you want to have a career and, and be a success. Uh, that's fine too, but, but if you start out because you love music and you love to make songs, then you're a success already. All you have to do is keep doing that, you know, somehow, you know. Some, some of the best bands I think you'll, you'll never hear of because they're people that have jobs and they write great songs, but they never get to a place where they can make records or find a record company or something. But, but they still make great songs. And, and some of the worst bands you hear are, are ones that are doing it because it's a business. And this sounds like a hit, so I wrote it yeah. that way. Yeah, we're lucky that there's the two of us, because uh, I think we keep each other from wiping out. So. <laughs> We have to make some legs serious up. fashion legs statements up, here. Tell I'll me be about a pointer. the tell me the, point. the fashion philosophy of the cramps. Look at those um, shoes. Sharp, pointy, tall. Um, these are training shoes. He's uh, we're training him to walk in higher heels. He'll graduate to higher and higher ones. My wheels fell yeah. off. Ballet too. You shop at some very famous stores, though, don't you? Where where do you where do you frequent? Famous stores. Yeah, like good. The best places to shop. They're you know, actually pretty obscure. What are they? These are the tall girl shoe store, where he, because he's a tall girl. Um, yeah, it's usually just 
short men in there, but uh, it's called the Tall Girl Shoe Store. We like to buy clothes in a lot of bondage shops. And especially in England, there's a lot of great bondage shops. Yeah. Prefer rubber and plastic Skin in, in clothes, okay, usually. Cool. I got to ask about this material, because last time you came to town, I saw you were wearing it. And now you got the whole band wearing it. it yeah, what good, is it? it? <laughs> what PVC. Is it? Feels good, this sounds is PVC. good. Okay. I like in, uh, is it in Germany or Holland, they call it gummy, G-U-M-M-I. <laughs> I mean, it's like latex and this gummy you wear. It's really funny. I mean, it's a good noise. And yeah, the whole band is... Um, to we don't always wear this kind of stuff, though. Sometimes we wear rubber. What is it about the cramps that that instills such? I don't know. Such well, we're a true rock and roll band, which is which is more than just a musical group. We we kind of uh, uh, stand for something. We represent our fans and uh, uh, say the things that we think they'd want us to say. And uh, like so it's uh, a little bit we're like we're, uh, um, you know, diplomats in a foreign land or something. It's a foreign planet. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that you guys are not too thrilled that rock and roll is turning so goody-goody these days with, let's save the environment. And, and it, I mean, that it's, it's not so much the voice of the youth. It's more like a voice of maybe establishment. Yeah. It's become respectable. And that's where the death of rock and roll is in respectability. It should be music for misfits. It should be... Um, should be dangerous. I mean, I'm sure those causes are all good causes, but mm. that's not the place of rock and roll. If the purpose of rock and roll is instant gratification. Yeah, it's like all these things, all these aid benefits and everything like that, it's like having, having a knife fight for, uh, for the good of humanity or something. It, just, it doesn't make sense. You mm. know? Rock and roll is juvenile delinquent music. You know? Or else it's not rock and roll, it's just pop music. Rock and roll rears its ugly head as every time it gets really boring and everybody gets really apathetic, uh, the youth sticks its head out and says, you know, well, we can't wait for uh, record companies to, to uh, uh, do something. We can't wait for disc jockeys to do something. We've got to do it ourselves. And they find a bar someplace and something starts happening. So that we're on the verge of a new explosion? Well, I hope so. I mean, it sure seems like it to me. We've been through the 80s and nothing really seen much happen rock and roll wise. And I, I hear a lot of people talking now, you know, kind of saying, you know, wow, 10 years went by and nothing happened. You know, uh, maybe we better make something happen. The 80s were really depressing. There was no rock and roll and maybe people are desperate. You know, right now it's, well, I don't know about Canada, but in America, it's sort of the ultimate, ultimate hysteria peak for, you know, anti-drugs, anti-sex, anti-everything. And, you know, I think there's going to, needs to be a big backlash that's just going to cause an explosion and we'll be there.